So today I would like to show you a couple of packages. So the first one I'm going to show you is called Snails. Actually, it's not Shell Pop, it's Snails. So Snails is uh, not available on Melpa or uh, any other repository. So you need to install that by Git. So I thought, okay, I can show you how you can install a package via Git also by using Git. So the way you install this package is you need to open your terminal and then you navigate into your preferred directory. For my case, I have navigated into .emacsd. Inside this directory, I have uh, used git to clone this. So git clone https github.com and uh, have specified this repository. So I will leave this link in the description which you can use. And after that you close your terminal or shell and after that you come over to your configuration file you add these lines like add to list load path and you specify the path where you have cloned this pack and you close that statement then in the next line you specify require snails so each and every time when Emacs opens up you will have availability of the package called snail if you hit alt X and type snails S N A I L S. It will open up something. So this is not the actual behavior for my case. This is because of my window management setup. So here you have some prefix for I menu. You have hash for current buffer. So if you need to search something, you specify the prefix and then you search. For example, if you need to search something in your current buffer, you can hit a hash or pound. And you can type something like uh, use dash package and you can specify like uh, remax or something so this actually have uh, rip grep and fuzzy finding capabilities so you have options for rip grep and uh, you have options to find everything so you can read through that and you can use it accordingly and if you navigate to this this will be like uh, this will take you the to that specific line the next package is shell pop shell pop is actually something i really like so while i'm working on some coding project sometime i need to compile some file for example if i'm working on a c project i need to execute the command gcc and arguments with the file main file so for that if i open up e shell for example, if I open up eShell or uh, Ansitem, you can see it's full screen mode. So I'm just uh, going to close that out. But it's actually nice to have something that pops up. And when I don't need it, I can close that. So how, here I have specified F4 for that. So if I hit F4, you can see this is pop shell. And if you hit F4 again, it's going to close pop shell so here I'm just using use packaged shell pop I'm specifying a key binding for that then I'm configuring it to use ans item by default so this is the statement you can copy this if you want or uh, you can just search about shell pop and you will get this configuration from the page then you can use set queue shell pop to use your default shell. So for my case, it's CSH. If you're using bash, you have to use bash over here. If you're using something like fish, you have to specify that. So that's the option over here. Then I can specify the type. The next package, which we are going to see is called golden ratio. So golden ratio is actually a nice way of window buffer management. So usually, uh, let me disable golden ratio mode. And if you do a control X3, you can see Emacs splits your region like this or your buffer like this. So split window is like this. So if you need to have something in a particular ratio, you can use the package golden ratio. So for example, I'm just going to go back to one window and if I activate golden ratio mode and if I do a control X3, you can see it uh, splits up something like this. So you have options to specify how it splits 
alerts, uh, stuff like that. So if you are having a wide monitor, you can uh, you have options for that. So I will leave a link in the description, which will take you to the GitHub page of cold and ratio. So you can see the configuration options over there. And uh, the next package is volatile highlights. So this is actually quite cool. Use package volatile highlights configuring. We are enabling volatile highlights mode. So this is actually something that's really useful for me because sometimes when I copy something, I'm just going to open up a code editing buffer over here. And uh, for example, I'm just copying this, okay? And uh, I'm just doing Alt W to copy. And if I paste this with Control Y, you can see it's actively highlighted. So when you do some modifications, that modification will be highlighted unless you press some key after that. If you press something, it goes away. So you can see what changes you have made by just, for example, maybe copying something or deleting something. So that's volatile highlights. So the way you do that is as simple as that. Then the next one is multiple cursor. I don't use multiple cursors that much, but if you are someone who uses this, you can use this. So this is the default configuration which I have copied. So use package multiple cursor, make sure it's installed and I'm specifying key bindings for multi cursor edit and mark lines, stuff like that. So the way you do that is I'm just going to open up a buffer over here. So here, if I want to change this uh, keyboard buffer, for example, like keyboard in this buffer, I select the region which I need to modify, Control Shift C and Control Shift C. So I have multiple cursors. So you can see like if I need to edit something, I can navigate and edit. So you have options for uh, marking next line like this. You have options for marking previous line like this. So you can check through that and you can use this accordingly. So here, if I need to edit this keyboard with uh, something like this or a foobar, it works just like that. So if I hit undo also, you can see like volatile highlights is giving me this. So this is the one which I have modified. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope this one was helpful. I hope you all have a wonderful day.